seconds as PK leaves the stadium and goes into the first long drag through the forest. I've got the stopwatch running on him. He's still the fastest, 1 minute 54.035, an incredible 133 miles an hour. And the gap between PK and Tombe is now up to 26 seconds with Arnu some six seconds behind Tombe in third position. John Watson some 28 seconds behind Arnu in fourth place. Keki Rosberg, 17 seconds behind Watson in fifth place. Michele Alboreto, six seconds behind Rosberg in seventh place. In sixth position, and out goes Piquet. My goodness, it seems that the Brabham's are fated, and he has hit Eliseo Salazar, and he's furious. The Brazilian and the, Col the Colombian driver, I couldn't help it, says, and take that. Oh, my goodness. Well, Nelson Piquet, understandably livid with rage, he has seen his chances of winning the German Grand Prix literally spin out, and there's Bernie Ecclers maybe being told, Eliseo Salazar, we only saw the tail end of it, but uh, obviously, as the decays, Piquet out, Salazar out, and that means to say that Patrick Tombe in the Ferrari leads his first Grand Prix. Yes, and that really is a tragedy. PK, of course, is absolutely serious, and I don't blame him. You're, you're, to be pushed out by an inexperienced backmarker is really a tragic way to lose a Grand Prix. It's happened to most of us, uh, a lot of drivers, one time or another. Here we see how it happened. PK going up the inside uh, to overtake Salazar. Salazar just driving into him. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, quite what Salazar thought he was doing, and I have to say that is an absolute disgrace by Salazar, and uh, I'm just about as angry as I think PK is, because he's he's robbed us of, a, of uh, the only interest in the race. Once again, we're robbed of seeing Brabham's in the pits, and uh, Salazar really should be taken to task over that. It was an uh, absolutely disgraceful piece of driving, and PK is totally justified in however angry he gets. And I think it's quite frankly, Salazar was sorry, lucky not being beaten up. Yes, and Gunther Schmidt, the millionaire German who owns the ATS wheel concern, will be very, very unhappy with uh, Winkelhock out of the race earlier on, and now his second car gone because of that mistake. It looked as though Salazar missed his brakes in driving into uh, Nelson Piquet. But uh, whilst we seem to be fated, as I said, never to see this much vaunted Brabham pit stop to take on fuel and change tyres, uh, with Patrese out, with Piquet out, Patrick Tombe now leads the German Grand Prix on lap 20, and there is the new leader. Lead. René Arnoux in second place, some six seconds behind. So they now look for the yellow and white Renault coming round the right hander there. There it is. And that's Derek Warwick touring. Derek Warwick touring in the turbo tournament. Tolme lead, Arnu second. Watson is up into third position now with four points in prospect. Kenny Rosberg is fourth. Michele Alvareto is fifth. And up into the points for the first time for a long time. Sixth position, Jack Lafitte. Seventh position, Derek Daly. Derek Warwick was up to eighth, but looks as though he is out of the race. And Patrick Tolme comes through to complete another lap in the lead. I'm still absolutely amazed by Salazar's driving because it wasn't as if he didn't know uh, the usual problem with that mark is they don't see him coming but I mean he made room for PK and let him go past and then attacked him up the rear it was the most extraordinary thing and it, uh, it again uh, casts into question the experience and skills of some of these KLM drivers who come in they bring uh, finance of their own uh, concept. they buy their drives they don't uh, earn the drive by their skill and uh, as i say they pay for their way to get in the car and uh, it certainly casts a lot of doubts on the advisability of doing that because uh, salazar has just ruined uh, quite a lot of people's day with uh, complete idiot driving